Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to show how you can make your own sketchbook or journal using kettle stitch bookbinding method. Please check the description box for full materials list. To begin with, I took A4 papers and folded all the papers in half and grouped into signatures. In bookbinding, one signature is made up to 4, 8, 12 or even more pages depending on the thickness of the papers. In my case, I took 4 papers in each signature and I have more than 20 signatures here. The number of papers totally depends on how thick you want your sketchbook or journal to be. After you are done with arranging the signatures, you need to mark every 1 inch on all the signatures. To do that, at first just mark on one signature and then make straight lines down from that signature to mark on the other signatures. I marked on every 1 inch. But if you want, you can increase or decrease the gap between each mark depending on the size of your sketchbook. Before we start sewing, we need to make holes in each of the marks we drew before. To do that, take one signature, open, and on the outer side where you can see the marks, Take an awl or big needle and make holes. Make sure you hold all the papers nicely so that all the papers stay in place. You can use binding clips as well to hold the papers together. Repeat this step on all the other signatures. For stitching, I'm going to use this cotton thread. It's thick, that's why I will use single thread for sewing, but you can use regular sewing thread as well. In that case, double thread your needle. Don't take too long thread as it will tangle a lot and will make the sewing process slower. Don't worry if you run out of thread before you finish sewing the whole sketchbook. I'll show you how to tie that off and start again once we get into the binding process. Don't forget to tie a knot at the end of your thread. We will start with the first signature from the bottom. Keep the other signatures in the same order so that you can place them on top when you are ready to bind them on. Pass the needle from the outer hole. and come out from the next hole then through the next one don't get frustrated if your thread tangles a lot just stay patient and pull the thread slowly if you have beeswax at home then wax the thread before you start sewing While stitching, don't pull the thread too much because you might end up ripping through the holes of the pages but also make sure there's no slack on the lines of the thread. When you reach the last hole, go through it as we did with the others. And return it through the previous hole on the inside. Continue to weave back through the previous holes until you get to the very first one.
When you will get to the first binding hole, return the needle back through it and tie a knot as I'm showing here. Then return the needle back to the outside and pull the thread until you see the knot from the inside comes outside. We will keep all the knots outside so that when we will glue everything together, the knots will also be glued down and will give the book more stability. Now add another signature on top and stitch through the first hole and come out from the next one as we did before. But this time, rather than going to the next hole, we need to pass the needle behind the thread below it and come up from behind the thread next to it. Then return the needle back into the same hole of the second signature. Pull the thread slowly and repeat the same process on the rest of the binding holes on that signature. When you will reach the last hole, pull the thread out and go underneath the thread of it just like we did on the previous hole. But this time, rather than passing the needle through the same hole, we will add another signature and pass the needle through the first hole on the new signature. Come out from the next binding hole and we always need to loop around the previous signature stitch. So now we will loop around the second signature stitches, not around those line of thread on the first signature. curved needle can make this looping process a lot easier but as you can see you can do it with a regular straight sewing needle as well. Return the needle back into the same binding hole and repeat the process on the other binding holes.
Now repeat the sewing process on the rest of the signatures. If you will see that you don't have a lot of thread left, then at around this length, tie it off. On the inside, make a knot as I am showing here. Make a nice and tight knot. And then return the needle back to the outside. As I mentioned before, we need to keep all the knots outside. Now trim the thread and thread your needle with a new thread. Tie a knot at the end and return the needle into the same binding hole where we left off and continue the binding process. When you will reach to the last signature, continue with the same binding process and when you will get to the last hole, pull the thread out, loop the needle behind the previous signature stitch and back into that same binding hole. and tie a knot on the inside of the signature. Return the needle back to the outside and pull the thread until the knot comes out. Now we have a text block with kettle stitch binding. Next we are going to glue the spine. To do that, on top of the text block I put some heavy things like stones, books or anything which have good amount of weight. And then apply glue as I am showing here. After this layer dries completely, I will apply two more coats of glue. We also need to add end pages. Fold two sheets of thick paper in half. Starting with one side, apply half an inch of glue on the edge of the text block. Then put the end page on top. Repeat this step on the other side. The glue is completely dry now. 
I added three layers of glue in total. Now I'm going to glue a scrap piece of paper on this side. As my text block is too thick, I want to make sure all the signatures stay nicely in place. But this part is totally optional. You can skip this part if you want to. It's totally dry. And now I'm going to add a ribbon and a cover page. Keep at least 2 inches ribbon to attach on this side and measure your text block and take a ribbon according to its size. For the cover page, I'm going to use thin brown paper as my text block is already very thick and heavy. I don't want to make it heavier by using any hard cover, but I will show you how to add a hard cover to your text block in another tutorial. If you want, you can use cardstock or any thick paper for the cover. Measure the length and height of your text block and take a paper according to the size. Now attach the ribbon first. Then glue down the cover page. I used different kind of papers, that's why the paper size was a little bit different and I ended up having rough edges. So I will trim the edges to make it nice and smooth, but you can keep the text block as it is. As you can see, I trimmed the edges and decorated my sketchbook using black tape, washi tape and some illustration from an old book. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you will make one after watching this tutorial, please feel free to share a picture of your creation with me on Facebook or Instagram. I'll come with another DIY video soon. Till then, take care and stay safe.